Hey everyone, and welcome to another weekend hangout on air, uh, powered by Radio Shack. Today we'll be talking about the LM386 audio amplifier. Uh, we're joined today with Nick Normal. How's it going, Nick Normal? Associate editor of Make Magazine. And as always, uh, Sam Freeman's hanging out with us at the Make HQ, uh, intern wrangler extraordinaire. How's it going, Sam? <laughs> Not bad. How you doing? Good, thanks. So uh, yeah, guys, today we'll be talking about uh, the LM386. Uh, it's a great uh, audio amplifier. It's used in three projects that we've done so far for the weekend project series. Um, the bass bump headphones amplifier, the infrared string bass, and the monobox powered speaker. Uh, so we'll be going over those three projects today. Uh, but before we do, we could talk about sort of what this little integrated circuit uh, is doing and uh, why it's kind of so prevalent. Um, you know, it's really great for audio amplification and some schematics that you could find out there that are pretty common. Um, the little smoky amp, uh, it's great for using with like an uh, electric guitar. And then another step up from there is, uh, let's see, the little gem, and that sort of adds volume and gain control. And then if you go one step further uh, and you do some input buffering to kind of tweak the signal, you can use uh, what's referred to as the Ruby. And we'll put links to uh, all the schematics uh, after the Hangout uh, in the comments below. And I should also mention, too, um, you know, we have comments going on. So if you have questions for us during the Hangout, go ahead and shoot them to us. We'll try to answer those uh, when we can. But uh, maybe, Nick Normal, should we go into the, the bass bump headphones? Um, Sam, I think you have a, a working copy yep. that I can show off. And we've got some screenshots to share. Ah, cool. That'll probably have a lot less glare on them. Yeah. But this is our working copy of the bass bump headphone amp. Uh, it boosts the low frequency spectrum of your audio signal and works for uh, headphones or small PC speakers. And it's great because um, here's like a, a blown up view of the internals. Um, you basically build two of these circuits on um, two uh, perf boards that you can get all the parts at Radio Shack. Um, just find them real easily. And it uses basically capacitors and resistors and um, you can control uh, both channels uh, with different knobs. Um, yeah. So it's actually kind of cool that Radio Shack sells the perf board for the IC as a set of two. And so you can see just in the lower uh, corner there, instead of breaking them up and using them twice, you just used, built each channel on the same board and just mirrored the circuit. And then the schematic, you can bring that up too. Uh, I thought actually this project I was looking over is, is a really good test um, if you're ready to tackle sort of like an intermediate project. Um, let's see, throw up the schematic here. Like Sam said, you just you build two of the same circuits essentially, um, and so the way it kind of works, uh, if we kind of like step through the circuit at least, is um, you break up the signal that's coming in from your MP3 player, um, some portable device, and you basically break it up at about 100 hertz frequency. And so there's a high signal and a low signal, and those both go through their uh, respective uh, high and low uh, bandwidth filters, uh, free, uh, filters, the RC circuits. Um, and then you actually recombine those signals once they've been filtered, uh, depending on how you control your knobs. And then you can send that to the LM386 amplifier, and that just amplifies the sound to go out through your speakers. So um, it's actually a cool combination of uh, filtering and then actually recombining the signals to get the final effect. So, yeah. so you're going to get a boost no matter what because of the LM386 right there. And then there's, uh, Sam, I guess we have a couple ways to mount it. Uh, you've got two examples. We can show those off. Yep, yeah. So here's the uh, quick and simple way to do it. Stick it in a Radio Shack project box. Put a couple of knobs on one side. Route the jacks cleanly through some grommets there. And then uh, your power, so you can power it from an internal battery with the plug, or you can plug in an external power socket right there. Or if you really want to show off your handiwork, you can do this really cool like, clear acrylic enclosure. Yeah, uh, it has a lower profile, too, when you put on some heavy-duty knobs. Yeah, it looks it, like there's a switch on there, too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on the original one, I think he just wanted the most robust option possible. And since occasionally switches uh, are known to break, he just had it plug it in, and it's on, unplug it, and it's off, uh, and it's Pretty idiot proof right there. But uh, yeah, in this version, he decided to actually throw in a switch for your uh, power selection. And we can mention, too, that the, uh, the author of the article, um, Ross Hirschberger, uh, he designed this circuit as well as the one of the other projects we'll talk about, the, the string base, the infrared string base. Um, 
And so I think in, in his comments initially he was saying, you know, switches can be really prone to breaking. And so on the original project with the Radio Shack enclosure, it wasn't included. And um, the way you turn off the power essentially is you unplug your input jack. Is that right, Sam? So it's kind of a cool, yeah. you know, when you're getting ready to carry it away, instead of having a switch or something, just unplug your plugs. Uh, it doesn't drain the battery. Uh, although, you know, one thing that's great about the, the LM386 is that's super low power. Um, if you look up in, like, the Texas Instruments data sheet, you can see that, um, like, the minimal operating current draw is something, or power draw is something like uh, 4 millivolts. So even if you do forget to uh, disconnect or turn off the power switch, it, it'll last a couple hours, you know, it won't totally kill your, your batteries. Yeah, uh, you're probably not going to notice a lot of draw just from the chip itself. Yeah, yeah. And then as the second example Sam showed with the clear case, you can see the rechargeable batteries inside. So you can actually kind of, could be a hassle to take it apart again. Um, at least with the, the build, you could use a rechargeable battery. So it's kind of a nice touch. Yeah. So that was a cool project. Definitely, yeah. So you never have to disassemble this case. You put all the time and effort into building. Right. Um, and that's actually what the switch does, is it's either on or it's in a uh, charging mode. That's and off just means that you can plug in power through there, through your homemade USB cable and charge it up. Awesome. So that's one application that we use the chip in. Another project that we did was the infrared uh, string base. I could throw up some screenshots of that, too. Maybe, uh, Nick Normal, you want to kind of mention some of that? Sure. Here we go. Can you see that OK? Yeah, so this is the, the final version of the project. And you can see it's got um, sort of three uh, home etched uh, cir printed circuit boards, and um, the main the main circuit is um, housed in that sort of notch on the wood next to the nine volt battery. It's accompanied by the other two circuits that are uh, mounted between those those threaded bolts there uh, that sort of make the um, that the strings are passing through. Those are infrared uh, emitter and detector diodes. Okay. So basically, the IR is you know emitting out of the emitter diode, uh, coming back in through the detector diode, going through the um, the, the main circuit, um, which has uh, sort of variable pots for each of the IRs, so you can fine tune them to the frequency that you need, and then the LM386 doing all the the you know op amp work and uh, outputting the audio, and you can see the, the the turnbuckles as well on the wood sort of allow you to also fine tune uh, the frequency of the the vibration of the string is actually what disrupts the IR emitter. Um, frequency to you know to generate the tune of, yeah. of the audio that you're playing. So yeah, very very neat project, very fun. Um, sort of a little advanced because you have to to home etch your own circuit boards, but right. yeah, to totally cool. And then we can also just throw up two. It's it's also another kind of a similar circuit. Um, I mean, most of these circuits are really kind of similar. Once you get the basics, the 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 LM386, um, you can control the gain by adjusting the um, basically a value in between pins one and eight, uh, usually using a resistor or a capacitor resistor in combination. So um, initially, the the chip is set to have a gain of about 20, um, and then you can actually customize that up to 200 depending on different configurations. So we yeah, it's pretty pretty good range. Really, yeah, really intense and. Pretty amazing that, it, that it's able to do that from such a small package, too. You know, yeah. So this is the uh, this is the infrared string base uh, circuit. Pretty yeah, pretty standard. Pretty, pretty standard, pretty simple, yeah. and um, yeah. Cool. So then, kind of the third project that we could talk about is uh, the monobox powered speaker. Um, that's always a good one. Uh, nice portable box you can bring out camping or when you're barbecuing. Just hook up your uh, your MP3 player uh, uses batteries again, and you can also plug in with the wall wart to power it. But um, I think Sam's got an example behind him, and Nick, you have the circuit okay. actually see in real life. Yeah, so I've got the box here, and that's a really good point about the both the you know the portability of this project. Um, so like you've mentioned, it you know can run from four to twelve volts. So in this case here, I've got it powered up by a nine volt battery, but you can just as well plug it into your car's twelve volt adapter. So if yeah. you wanted to, you know, be driving and route somewhere, you've also got portability there. Um, and this thing can can really blast. I won't turn it up all the way tonight. Okay. Um, and I'll show you the circuit in a bit. So this is a just turn it on here. And and I mean that's great because the project shows you how to make the circuit, and then like Nick put it in 
a really cool yeah. What's really amazing about this project in particular is just how crisp the audio is, both the low and the high frequencies and the mid. Okay. It's a, it's just a really great sound. This isn't um, filled with any sort of uh, um, foam or anything, so, oh, really? so it, it sounds a, sounds a little hollow to me right now. I don't know what you guys can hear over the net, but um, if you were to fill it with foam, it's got an even more sort of solid body to it. It sounds yeah, really no, great. Yeah, I know we had a version of that where we did fill it with uh, some polyester batting, I think. Yeah. And then um, yeah, it was sort of even more bit. solid sound. Um, so let me just de plug these things here and see if I can show you what what we got on screen. So this is a standard, you know, eight ohm speaker. Okay. And then back there in the bottom of the box is the circuit, the uh, power plug, and the audio input. And the the circuit, um, again, pretty amazing because it's about twelve components, and it's built on that same. Uh, butterfly uh, circuit board that the okay. bass bump headphone amp is, but this is only one of those two sides. So yeah. you could, you very well could. Uh, so this is mono. That's the other point. But you very well could double this up and make it stereo. Um, but it sounds just fine in mono. You know, for for most applications. I mean, again, barbecue, yeah, I mean, going to the beach, whatever. Here's a screenshot of the. The kind of zoom in of the circuit, you can yeah, see from, you from Nick's example, like the circuit is a really small physical component in like this project. You can put it in boxes, different containers, different size speakers, um, but you can just make this one, this one amp, and really just power different speakers and power sources, and then find ways to embed them in different kind of cases. Um, so that's the second, the fun part I think for me is like you know you do the electronics and you get your circuit working, and then there's a whole other side of the project where you actually how can you embed it or how can you you know, put it in a really cool wooden enclosure, make your own, you know, crafted box. So, um, another great project to do on the weekends and all the parts you can get at Radio Shack, you know, real simple is pick them up. This is, uh, th this version of the mono box is inside of a um, Churchill Havana Reserve cigar box, you know, nice. it's been cut and fitted with this nice uh, cloth grill. Um, but there was, a, there was a maker last year that built uh, the mono box inside of a a biscuit tin, and so it had a cylindrical shape to it. And, okay. You know, was cool. a little bit, a little bit of a different portability yeah. form factor. Um, so yeah, like you say, very, very versatile. You can build it into whatever you've got laying around that you otherwise thought you'd have to chuck, and then you've got, now you've got a portable, portable speaker. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking, um, it's such a cool platform, to, like the LM386. Uh, it's kind of, at least, I'm thinking of. Kind of parallel to like a five 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 timer chip. Like once you mm -hmm. sort of understand how they work and how they operate, you can really see a bunch of different applications for it. I mean, you can go so far as to include uh, adjusting the gain uh, with this circuit, and then also adjusting the volume. And you can play with those two combinations just with potentiometers and really fine tune the sound for you know the specific box that you have it in, or maybe you're at the beach and it's really windy that day. You can really crank up the power. Um, it, it says something like half a watt power output for this little chip, so that's pretty good, um, you know, for a, a portable stereo system, um, if you made two of them at least. And then I think you can actually bridge them together. You can use two of these chips together and get one watt of power out, make an even bigger amp. So um, tons of great applications for it. Yeah, Marshall actually build a practice amp. So it's a total just portable, it's a tiny, tiny portable practice amp and, you know, built by a name, br name brand, oh, yeah. you know, audio manufacturer, and it uses a variation of the LM386 that's not uh, dual inline, it's single inline, and so, like, that's, that's just proof of concept that, you know, it's, it's a very capable, capable chip. Like you say, it's probably the equivalent of the 555 for audio applications yeah. for learning. You know, and I was also looking up, because um, the uh, Texas Instruments has a great uh, data sheet out there with all of the kind of, like, basic stats, and they actually, I was really surprised, they show you I believe it's like four to six basic circuits that you could do for different applications. Um, and I jotted some down because, you know, I, I hear it's frequently used for audio applications, but, you know, they were saying AM, FM amplifier, um, an intercom system, a TV sound system, uh, ultrasonic driver. So I was thinking maybe you could try to integrate like an ultrasonic kind of range finder if you had like a receiving end to do that. It'd be a cool robotics application. Um, oh, cool. And then it was also a small servo driver. So even if you're not into the audio, yeah. it would be worthwhile. 
to look in like the mechanical. That's pretty wicked. Yeah, I of it. And then, you know, like power converters. So it's cool. And there's tons of circuits out there on the web. Just like do a Google search. You find tons of resources, free circuits, great step-by-step -step instructions, the weekend projects, obviously. That, that's actually a really great uh, segue, though, Nick. I wanted to give a shout-out to a couple people. Obviously, Ross Hirschberger, who couldn't join us today. He's, he's fixing a laser in South Carolina. Um, right. But th thanks for him and all the work that he's done with the Weekend Project Series. I also wanted to thank uh, Addy and Whisker. Uh, AKA the toy makers, they have a bunch of really great uh, sort of how-tos online, yes. um, specifically for learning about the LM386, and they even walk through and they break down that Texas Instruments data sheet sort of step oh. by step, and they they like really sort of deconstruct it for learning purposes. Yeah. So you know they talk about device dissipation, voltage gain versus frequency, so on and so forth. It's really really fun if you're if yeah, yeah, and it's really plain speak. It's really easy to learn. So, um, yeah, for sure, visit their website. They're uh, tymkrs.com, toymakers.com, without the vowel. So, yeah, and then like like I said, we'll be posting a bunch of links at the end of the hangout uh, in the comments. So if you have some more questions about these specific projects that we've been mentioning, or you know some of the similar circuits like the the Smoky Amp circuit, um, the Ruby, uh, great place to start. Um, so please, you know, keep us posted on what you guys are building. Um, if you have questions, feel free to uh, ask them. And there's always the weekend projects page. Um, Nick and Sam, anything else before we tune off? Uh, just a, um, we won't be here next week. So have a great holiday week next week, and we'll see you in uh, the first Friday of December. Yeah. So Sam, Nick, uh, thanks for joining us today for the weekend projects hangout on air, uh, powered by Radio Shack. We'll uh, we'll see everybody in two weeks. All right. Take care. Thanks, Nick.